Hey, welcome back. In this video, I want to show you how to determine if a set of vectors is linearly dependent or independent. Um, this is really just a yes or no question, but the way that we determine if it's yes or no also happens to give us a dependence equation if the vectors are linearly dependent. So a set of vectors is linearly dependent if there's an expression that looks like this, where we have c1, v1 plus c2, v2 plus dot, 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 all the way up to c n v n. Now these v's, these will be our vectors in the set. There can be as many vectors as you want, um, but as long as there is a corresponding scalar for each of those vectors that gets multiplied to said vector, um, if we can generate an expression that looks like this and set it equal to zero, if at least one of these scalars is not zero, then the, the set of vectors is linearly dependent. If the opposite is true, basically, so if if we can't generate this expression in this form that's equal to zero with at least one of these scalars not being zero, then we just say that the set of vectors is linearly independent. So the way that we solve for this, or the, the easiest way to determine this is to take all of the vectors that we have and set those as the columns in an augmented matrix on the left-hand side. So that would be one, negative one, and one, and then we get one, one, zero, and then negative one, one, two. And then on the right hand side, just set all of these equal to zeros. And what we do is we want to try to apply our elementary row operations to get this thing into reduced row echelon form. And if we can do that, and there is uh, there's no free variable, then the set of vectors is independent. And if we go through and we find out that there is a free variable, then the set of vectors is dependent. And what I mean by a free variable is if you had, um, if you get down to reduced row echelon form, I'll just draw for a, a three by three matrix, for example, but if you get like this, zero, zero, one, and then because we set all those to zeros, those would still be zeros. Um, this augmented matrix has a single unique solution and each of these variables is independent from the other. There's not one of these that depends on another variable. Whereas if we had something like this where we don't quite get reduced row echelon form, we end up with something like this and then uh, row of zeros at the bottom. Basically this variable up here is going to kind of mess with everything else and all of these other variables will actually depend on this variable. So this would be the, the free variable, which would make the set of vectors dependent, whereas this one has no free variable and uh, this set of vectors would be linearly independent. So uh, let's go and apply the elementary row operations and see if we can get this thing into reduced row echelon form. So let's first try and knock off these to zeros. So let's do R2 plus R1. And uh, also we'll do R3 minus R1. So when we write that out, row 1 is unaffected. We get 1, 1, negative 1, and then our divider line over here. Uh, row 2 plus row 1, so negative 1 plus 1 is 0. 1 plus 1 is 2, and 1 plus negative 1 is 0. And then 0 plus 0 is 0. Here for R3 minus R1, so we have 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 minus 1 is minus 1. And 2 minus negative 1 is uh, positive 3. And that's all equal to 0. So the next thing that we can do is uh, maybe let's divide row 2 by 2. And then the next step that would make sense is let's go R1 minus R2 because we want to knock that out to a zero and we'll do R3 plus R2. All right, let's come down here for some more space. Um, so the first row, uh, we have one, uh, R, so we have one minus one is zero, minus one minus zero is just minus one still. And then we have zero. Okay, so R2 is unaffected in this step. So we have zero, one, zero, zero. And then R3 plus R2, so we have zero plus zero is zero. One plus negative one is zero. And uh, then we had three plus zero is three. And this is still zero. All right, almost there. What we can do is we can just do R3 divided by three. And then the last step here, we can knock out this last variable here. We'll just do R1 plus R3. 
and we're able to actually achieve reduced row echelon form. So there is no free variable showing up to the right or left of any of these leading entries. And when we have no free variable, that means that this set of vectors is linearly independent. And uh, we'll get into it later in a couple more videos, but this also means that this is an orthogonal set of vectors. Um, you can also prove that basically each of these vectors is orthogonal to the other. And so if you took the dot product of any of these two vectors, you would get zero. For example, like uh, one times one is one plus negative times one times one is so one plus negative one plus zero. Um, the, the dot product of those two is zero. And you could check the dot product of V1 with V3 and V2 with V3 as well. Um, and also these vectors form an orthogonal basis for R3. Um, but don't worry about that stuff. If you're not dealing with orthogonality yet, then uh, that's just kind of, if you're familiar with those words, that stuff also applies. But if you're not there yet, then that's okay. Um, this set of vectors is linearly independent um, and that just means that basically there's no way that we can write this expression where we have a scalar times v1 plus a scalar times v2 plus a scalar times v3 and make that all equal to zero without all of the scalars being equal to zero. All right, so join me in the next video and we're going to go through an example where we have a linearly dependent set of vectors and then we're also going to write the dependence equation for them.